Hey there, Huskies. Welcome back to another year of New Scene. My name is Kay Mabwa. And I'm Graham Williams. We have a great show for you, so let's get right into it. First off, we have this week's Husky in Focus, a new segment that will follow a different OPRF student or faculty member to get an inside look at what makes them a noteworthy individual. This week's subject is the drum major for OPRF's Marching Huskies, Gabe Showman. My name's Gabe Schoenman, and I'm the drum major for the Marching Huskies. Day one home opener, super pumped to actually perform this in front of like an actual audience. I'm ready, I'm excited. Let's go. So I started singing, playing piano, and then playing drums in fourth grade, and I've been playing ever since. Uh, in marching band, I played frontline, which is more of like the mallets, and then became a section leader my junior year. And then I was able to conduct the pit for Legally Blonde, which was the summer show, two summers ago, and that just got me hooked on conducting, and I ended up auditioning for drum major in April. Where you by air, The drum majors in the marching band are the people that stand on the podiums uh, towards the front of the field and they conduct the entire show. We have to know the show inside and out, every single instrument, what they play at certain points of the show. You gotta know all the sets, what each picture is supposed to look like, who goes where. That was probably the best we'd ever run the show to. It felt amazing hearing the roar from the crowd, hearing that wall of sound that like, I really never had before. But we got our first competition on Saturday, which I'm super pumped for. I'm super excited like, just to show everything we have in store and what we can do. And yeah, I'm just excited for the whole season. And once the show becomes 100% done, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be one of the greatest shows I think the marching band has ever pulled off. This week in varsity sports, we're taking a look at the boys' soccer team. Recently, the Huskies faced off against Whitney Young in their fourth game of the season. Following kickoff, the Huskies proved dominance early as they established a strong control of the game on their home field. Within the first few minutes, forward Sam Menzies netted a shot past Whitney Young's keeper. However, it was ruled a no goal, as the referees have called it offsides. The rest of the first half would go scoreless for both teams. Throughout the second half, the Huskies maintained the same high-pressure offensive as they dominated the ball up and down the field. A quick place play style allowed the home team several scoring opportunities. However, nobody could get past Whitney Young's prevailing goalie. Within two minutes left in the game, James McGuire stepped up and sniped a corner shot, scoring his first goal of the season. The Huskies easily held on to their win, letting the remainder of the time run out. Final score, Huskies 1, Whitney Young 0. Keeping with the theme of sports, September 1st, the OPRF varsity football team pulled out a hard-fought win against Downers Grove South. The Huskies were sweeping ahead in the fourth quarter, 17-7. OPRF overall won 21-17. Senior Terrence Roundy scored the game-winning touchdown with help from senior quarterback Brian May and junior Keith Robinson. We'd also like to highlight player Isaiah Ruffin. Ruffin led OPRF with 7.5 tackles, 1.5 sacks, and 3 tackles for loss. The season's looking promising for the Huskies, and you'll definitely want to be at the next Friday night home football game. Looking around OPRF, you may notice a lot of seniors looking dejectedly at their computer screens attempting to fill out the Common App. With application season in full swing, it is now time for our newest segment, The Monitor. College. The number one thing on seniors' minds, with the possible exception for Taylor Swift's new album. I can tell it's once again application season by both the dead look on any senior's face and the sea of emails from colleges flooding my inbox. Today alone, colleges have sent me 21 emails, 25 pieces of regular mail, and U of C even sent me this swanky t-shirt. And to be clear, I'm not complaining. I like the shirt. Please keep sending shirts. According to a Money Watch article, every year colleges spend on average $585 per applicant and $2,232 per admitted student to recruit them. And across the country, as much as $10 billion is spent on marketing. Let's take University of Illinois as an example. 
with roughly 38,000 annual applicants, they may spend as much as $22 million on marketing, as public four-year colleges spend on average $14,000 per year per student. If the University of Illinois didn't spend so much on marketing, they could pay tuition for as much as 20% of their freshman class. On a national level, if we filled the OPR football stadium about 21 times, every one of the 128,571 people would be able to have a free education. As prices of colleges rise and higher education becomes more essential for well-paying jobs, the top priority of admissions counselors should be making college more affordable. If colleges would spend less on recruiting students, it could not only help thousands of students get a college education for free, but would also be much easier on my inbox. This has been The Monitor. Kicking off the school year with an activity fair, students were invited to learn about the endless number of clubs and activities available for them to participate in during the year. From cosmetology club to robotics, OPRF offers a wide range of ways for students to get involved. For our more musically gifted Huskies, Mr. Sveta leads Jazz Man 2, a club that meets weekly and gives concerts with the jazz ensemble throughout the year. Let's take a look. When I was in grade school, my parents noticed that we really liked to play this organ that we had at our house, it was a mini organ, and my sister was actually taking lessons one day and my parents noticed that I have a twin and we actually went to that organ after her lesson. We actually played it more than she did. Very first time I started playing music I started with piano, um, but then I, that evolved into playing more music in fourth grade when we chose our instruments and then uh, I chose euphonium and the teacher at the elementary school um, chose me to begin playing bass in the jazz band because uh, it's easier for euphoniums to switch over because they read the same music, um, the bass and the euphonium. So I, she got me a bass and I started playing bass. I started playing jazz and I slowly began to learn that I loved jazz. Um, so I continued playing throughout middle school and then I switched over to upright bass. Um, so that I could continue playing in high school at a higher level. Um, and since then I've just been, I've been playing jazz forever, so. And jazz Band 2 meets on Tuesdays uh, once a week throughout the, whole season, throughout the whole year. And then we have a jazz combo that actually meets. Not many people know about it other than at the, our concerts. But jazz combo, we have a professional in town, a professional jazz musician that comes in and works with that combo during the late arrival days, that's it. I like the fact that we see students grow immediately. They, you could see either it's on their face or even through their playing that they just truly love what they do. And when we first start playing, it's really cool just to see, it, you could see this, oh, I'm not sure, they're, you know, they're unsure of themselves in some way, whether it be rhythm or notes or whatever it is. A lot of jazz is not written down, so it's even more of a pure form of just like complete and utter like self-expression of the soul, which um, I think is really special. That's all we have for this week. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good one, Huskies.